Welcome to the Rehabilitation Research and Training Center on Vocational Rehabilitation Practices and Youth online seminar series. The center conducts research and provides trainings and technical assistance which investigate problems, craft solutions, and design actionable strategies for translating research into usable, feasible, and effective strategies for transitioning stakeholders, which include VR agencies, policymakers, researchers, transitioning youth and their family, educators, practitioners, and employers. Our online seminars are designed to provide VR counselors and other youth employment stakeholders with short training lessons on a wide variety of topics related to VR practices and youth outcomes. Each seminar is conducted by well-respected content experts. Once you've watched the online seminar, you have the opportunity to take a quiz to show what you've learned. A link to the quiz will appear once the seminar video is completed. If you score 70% or higher on the quiz, you'll be emailed a certificate of completion for your records. If your score is below 70%, you'll have one additional chance to re-watch the seminar and take the quiz. Check out our website at www.vrpracticesandyouth.org uh, and check it out frequently for new seminars publications, free webinars on topics related to providing effective vocational rehabilitation services to youth and young adults or to contact us directly with questions. The Rehabilitation Research and Training Center on Vocational Rehabilitation Practices in Youth is funded by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Administration on Community Living. Now on to the seminar. Hello everyone and um Welcome to the VR Performance Measures webinar, How Changes in the VR Performance Measures Spell Opportunity for Inclusive Higher Education Programs. So we'll go to the next slide, please. A little bit about us who are uh, presenting to you today. Um, working with me in this webinar today is Dr. Jen Saluski, who is a Senior Research Associate at the University of Massachusetts, Boston, and the Institute for Community Inclusion. My name is Russ Tolleen. I am a senior policy fellow also at UMass Boston and the Institute for Community Inclusion. And Jen and I have the opportunity of working together on the Think College team there at the ICI. And it is a privilege for me today to be presenting with Dr. Saluski. But there you have a face you can kind of uh, put a voice to as you go through this webinar. Next slide, please. The objectives today that we would like to um, work on so that you come away with a better understanding of this particular topic are as follows. We'd like to establish how the advent of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, or as we will refer to it throughout the presentation as WIOA, how that act affects vocational rehabilitation in a way that provides greater partnership opportunities with inclusive higher education programs. We also hope to inform on the new common performance measures established under WIOA and how they move VR orientation from long-standing measures that were largely job only and employment focused towards career driven services and outcomes. And lastly, to share some strategic ways that these new common performance measures provide for establishing, renewing, and or strengthening communications and collaboration and partnerships between vocational rehabilitation and programs of inclusive higher education. Next slide, please. For decades, performance of vocational rehabilitation programs were measured by standards of which there are two. Now in this slide, you'll see that we're talking about a history of standards and indicators. This slide talks predominantly about the standards portion of those old standards and indicators. As I mentioned, there are two standard, standards with indicators under each of them. Standard one has addressed trends and ratios with indices looking at things like the positive number of um, employment outcomes the rehabilitation rate, rates of competitive employment, rates of significance of disability in terms of various categories, 
changes in earnings and changes to self-support. Standard two um, has one indicator and looks to see if the rate of services to minority populations is consistent with the percentage that they exist in the general population. But as I mentioned, that one, that standard has but one indicator. These standards and indicators were unique to the vocational rehabilitation program with no other programs sharing these performance measures. And I think it's important to note that historically, BR or voc rehab programs have performed well on these standards and indicators. Next slide, please. This slide now takes a look at the uh, more heavily at the indicators portion of the historic standards and indicators. Standard one had six indicators, while standard two, as I previously mentioned, had but one. For successful performance, vocational rehabilitation needed to annually meet four of the six indices under standard one and the singular indicator of standard two. The primary indicators under standard one were percentage of outcomes in competitive employment, earning ratio to state's prevailing wage, the percentage of those with significant disability who are in competitive employment. The one indicator for standard two needed to be met annually, and as I mentioned before, was simply to show that minority populations were being served by vocational rehabilitation, at least at the same rate they existed in the population or greater. Now, I'm not sharing the details of these standards and indicators as, frankly, they're now defunct, and there's really no value in doing so. I simply wanted to give you a framework for how VR has been oriented for decades to what toward what is needed for them to be considered successful. The focus to obtain success in performance given these now outdated standards and indicators for many years has been numbers, ratios, percentages, and trends. Things like equal or greater number of people getting into jobs from year to year. Ratios of those receiving, um, of those who receive services who actually got employment outcome and wages that met some lesser percentage of the prevailing wage in the state. Things like that. Next slide, please. Then along comes the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. It establishes a new paradigm for the workforce development system. It shifts emphasis from jobs, any jobs, to career-directed support and services from WIOA partner agencies of which vocational rehabilitation is a part. Gone are the long used standards and indicators that we've been talking about for assessing performance for VR agencies. Under WIOA, new common performance measures were established that bring VR into criteria that are common with other workforce partner systems. And so you know who those partners are uh, within WIOA. They include adult and youth workforce programs, dislocated worker programs, adult education, employment service programs, and then of course vocational rehabilitation. Next slide please. With WIOA, it was not just measures that were updated, but a whole new expectation and mindset of how the VR program needs to operate and be evaluated no longer focused on simply employment attainment and related measures, WIOA introduces VR to measures that are very new to them and are a paradigm shift from how the program has operated for a very long time, not necessarily in operations, but in how those operations are to be focused. The other thing that's important to note here is no longer are these numbers annually reported but quarterly, with the first quarterly report on these new common performance measures submitted just this past November 2017. Frankly, this is still so new and such a shift from decades of very different measures that vocational rehabilitation agencies are still trying to wrap their heads around this. So if you talk with them or if you're a VR program who's communicating with inclusive higher education, don't be surprised 
with talking this over is not something that either of you are well grounded on. VR is fine with these programs. They generally see them as good and positive, but they are still getting their focus on them into 2020 vision because it's such a shift for them in how they've operated. Next slide, please. So what are the new common performance measures? Rather than just a number of clients who got into a job, as the prior standard indicated, the measures now focus on how many people who are served to career-focused employment are achieving an outcome that results in an unsubsidized employment at both six and 12 months after their services are terminated. Previously, the measure was people who got into employment with a minimal amount of um, sustainability on that job as a measure of performance. Now, VR is being measured on how those individuals are doing in sustaining that employment unsubsidized at the second and fourth quarter, as well as the median earnings during the second quarter after they are exited. There are two areas of focus primarily that are not new to VR, but they're new in how they are measured for performance. One is job retention, and the other is earnings sustainability and increase over time. Very new to the VR program. Next slide. This slide talks about one of two performance measures that are new with a sub-measure and is very indicative of the career focus nature of WIOA. Vocational rehabilitation is now expected to report on those it serves that are in secondary, post-secondary, or training programs and employed or enrolled toward a recognized post-secondary credential. These topics are completely new to vocational rehabilitation, having never had them used as a measure of performance until now. Using this performance measure can be a great touch point for inclusive higher education programs to connect and have discussion with vocational rehabilitation. Inclusive higher education programs can be a resource to vocational rehabilitation to help them in meeting this measure, which is so new to them because of the nature and scope of the training and education and outcomes that inclusive higher education programs pursue. Next slide, please. Similar to measure four, the fifth common performance measure has a sub-measure as well and mandates the Vocational Rehabilitation Agency to report on data as a performance standard that it has not ever had to do in the past, at least relative to education, training, and skill gains. Again, this is a great touch point under which inclusive higher education programs and VR can have a meaningful discussion and develop strategic plans that both serve students in inclusive higher education and provide success measures for the vocational rehabilitation program as well. Now, the topic of a recognized post-secondary credential is a touchy term at the present time, and we could spend a lot of time today that we don't have to talk about it. But knowing that question is probably, or that issue is coming up in your minds, suffice to say that a clearer and recognized definition that is appropriate for students in inclusive higher education programs is being sought and has been communicated to the necessary audiences. So please stay tuned for that. Now the last measure of the com common performance measures is measure number six and deals with how well VR is effective in serving employers as a client slash customer as well as the individuals with disabilities that the program serves. So in this measure you're taking a look for the first time at VR needing to report on employers as a dual customer with individuals with disabilities. Knowing that inclusive higher education programs have a lot of contacts and business uh, and, and uh, relationships with businesses, herein is yet another touch point for strategic partnerships between VR and in programs of inclusive higher education. 
So there are your common performance measures, uh, albeit quick, but hopefully you can see the difference between the prior um, trends, ratios, and numbers to some of the new things that are being expected and touch points that present themselves for inclusive higher education. So at this point, I'm going to turn the time over to Dr. Saluski so that she can cover the next portion of our presentation. Okay, thank you, Russ. And I'm going to pick up from slide 11, please. And what I'm going to be talking about is why this information on new performance measures is important for partnerships between higher education and vocational rehabilitation. And as Russ mentioned, part of it is just that the language of the new common performance measures reflects things like post-secondary education skills, attainment, um, enrollment toward credentials or certification that were not part of the standard for VR before. So clearly there's a new focus on skill development and the role of post-secondary education in developing those skills. So moving on to slide 11, slide 12, please. I'm next going to talk a little bit about why this information is important for these partnerships in relation to some of the data that we're seeing in our research on inclusive higher education and the outcomes of those programs. So I'll start, start by covering some um, numbers and figures in terms of outcomes and then move into some of the qualitative data or interview data that we've collected in our case study work. So slide 13, please. One clear result of higher education um, for students with intellectual disabilities is that they have a higher rate of paid jobs compared to other adults with intellectual disabilities. So the data in the next couple of slides are taken from ICI's, I uh, think college's data collection on the transition and post-secondary programs for students with intellectual and developmental disabilities or TIPSIDs. We've been collecting data on those students and alumni for several years now and found that the rate of paid integrated employment of TIPSID students at the point of their exit from the program was about 35%, and that actually jumps to about 60% for students that are one year post-exit. So those are really good employment outcomes, particularly if you compare to the National Core Indicators data, which are data collected on individuals in the Developmental Disability Service System, adults with developmental disabilities, and among those people, employment is 17%. It's worth noting that the, the population of TIPSID students may be slightly different from the developmental disability population overall in that TIPSIDs often have entrance criteria, and so the level of disability may be lower for those students. Regardless, it's a pretty substantial difference in employment rates. So slide 14 looks at unpaid career development. So this is unpaid activity related to career development. At exit from the TIPSID program, 58% of students are participating in some sort of unpaid career development, whether that's internships, volunteer work, further training, career exploration. That actually drops to 36% one year after exit, but Overall, that's a good thing because it's reflected in an increase in paid employment rates. So students are making that transition from unpaid career experience to paid employment. For comparison, adults in the DD system have a 22% rate of unpaid community activity and a 34% rate of participating in volunteer work. So moving on to slide 15. We also see a difference in earnings. So the data on this slide are actually taken from the um, data that VR agencies collect. So these are all VR clients exiting as youth, that is under age 26. And if you look at youth that exit VR with no higher education exposure, <clears throat> their earnings are about $200 per week. It's one and a half times that for youth that exit VR with uh, an increase in higher education attainment, that is having obtained some sort of degree or certifi certification. Slide 16. So those are some of the numbers, but 
at least as telling of some of the quotes that we heard when we went out uh, over the past year across the country talking to students, parents, and college and VR staff about their partnerships between VR and higher education institutions and the outcomes of that. And there was a strong theme in those interviews that college is an important growth opportunity leading to increased independence, self-confidence, self-esteem, and social skills for students that graduate from these programs which is true really for people with and without disabilities. But as examples of some of the things we heard, we heard a recent graduate say, I feel much more confident now that I've been to college. A parent said, my son has just totally changed in the last 15 or 16 months as a result of this higher education experience and VR support for that. A staff member from a college program said, we see every day this incredible growth related to higher expectations that you're gonna learn and progress throughout the college experience. And moving on to slide 17, perhaps even more relevant to today's conversation about VR outcome measures is that we heard the same thing from VR counselors and staff. And they really made the connection from that to the kind of outcomes that VR is looking for. Said one VR counselor, the executive skills students learn, being an equal member on a college campus, you just can't replace that with anything else. I don't think without that program, most of them would be where they are at. Similarly, a uh, VR staff person in another state said, VR people might be a little skeptical right now, but give it a year, look at these students over a year, and you'll see these kids really change and grow and become working adults. So moving on to slide 18, what these VR staff are really talking about is how this growth opportunity that college provides really leads to more success in adult life and in employment, which is really what vocational rehabilitation outcomes are all about, and what these new performance measures reflect even more so than the older performance measures in that they're following the progress of people that exit VR over a longer period of time and looking at whether their employment success is maintained and increased over time. So, there's certainly reason to hope that these students that are exiting with these increased um, skills such as social skills and independence are then having longer term outcomes that are better in terms of employment and that will show up in those VR outcomes. So I will hand things back over to Russ for the next slide. Actually, slide 19 is just a list of the data sources in those charts that I just put up. So I think we'll move on to the next one for us to take over. Thank you, Jen. And um, I, I think that you can see from that data and some of the comments received from students, from others, uh, particularly vocational rehabilitation individuals, that there is some real value to a partnership between vocational rehabilitation and inclusive higher education programs. And I would encourage you to take a look at that data, um, go to those references that are noted there, and look at ways that you can help um, establish these types of uh, partnerships for the students that this program is, is really targeted to and has opportunity to serve. This slide really talks about um, how alignment can happen between vocational rehabilitation and programs of inclusive higher education for students with intellectual disabilities. The, the issue or the, the, the point I'm trying to make with that um, image that's on that slide is there is a convergence that is taking place with these common performance measures, given the new things that VR is asked to report on and that uh, provide some of these touch points that we talk about. Next slide, please, uh, 21. So how, you might ask, how do they converge? What is the synergy that can come from this? Well, both programs have the goal of increasing employment capacity and financial independence for people with disabilities. And in the case of inclusive higher education, students with intellectual disabilities, who by the way, often fall into a category that vocational rehabilitation is prioritized to serve. Number two, both programs have a focus on increasing measurable skill gains now for advancing career opportunities. Both have components of providing individuals with work experiences that are paid, unpaid, or both, 
and both have similar measures of expected success. So there's a lot of common ground here on which you can start to build partnerships under the new common performance measures. Next slide, please. This slide is intended to give you just a few things to start with um, as you consider what you can do to begin a relationship or conversation with vocational rehabilitation, re-engage it, or simply advance an already existing partnership that you have along the lines of the material that these common performance measures now allow you to discuss. I kind of liken it to playing in a quartet. Um, everyone has their part to play. Everyone has their line of music to play. But when it comes together, it creates something quite stunning and actually can have great impact on those that are paying attention to it. And I think that that's true for this um, partnership as well. A few ideas that I would suggest um, are simply to communicate between your inclusive higher ed program and your VR program, whichever side of, of that partnership you find yourself on. There are things you can discuss on how you can help those um, through and in educational and training programs to get a credential certificate or diploma, one of the common measures now. Seek a recognized post-secondary credential an opportunity now being measured through the common measures. Three, seek skill gains for employment. Skills, soft skills, executive skills, interpersonal skills, the ability to make decisions, to be self-directed, to um, be interdependent within a workplace. Those are skills that employers are looking for. And that those are things that VR is looking for, and those are the things that higher education programs for students with intellectual disabilities are providing those students attending there. And then team together in meetings and uh, to serve employers. As mentioned, there's an indicator, excuse me, a measure six now, where um, reporting on how you're meeting businesses' needs. What a great opportunity for both programs to partner to meet the needs of business. Another idea is communicate how you can synchronize data between your two programs to meet common performance measures for VR as well as for inclusive higher education. Talk using common language. Have a common vision and have a common purpose. Something that is uniquely in your partnership but follow, falls under the umbrella of the WIOA mandate. And consider things like pilot programs or strategic activity teams. Put together task-oriented committees between your organizations. Establish a vision for them. Put together a charter on something that can be worked on that will help serve these students that can be best served through the partnership and address those. So there are some places for you to at least start having some thoughts and dialogue as you work with your VR program. Next slide, please. couple of things to remember, and I'm coming at this from a vocational rehabilitation background, which is my background. Remember, it's not just about the money. Vocational rehabilitation provides many more things than funding for tuition or fees or books or living expenses while on campus. They provide counseling, adjustment training, assistive technology, and more. Remember that VR now has a focus on careers and skill development and job retention and earnings increase, not just employment and getting a job. And remember in the principle of synergy, something greater than the sum of both parts is possible when you partner together and use the common measures at least as one point of discussion to help you establish outcomes for common students towards the, the purpose of both programs. Next slide, please. This is um, a slide that is one of my very favorite quotes, and I think it applies to this particular topic today. This is from the founder and CEO of Amazon, who um, is a very, very successful person if you follow Amazon at all, and I can't imagine anyone who doesn't. But I love this quote that he says. What we need to do is always lean into the future. 
when the world changes around us and when it changes against you, what used to be a tailwind is now a headwind. You have to lean into that and figure out what to do because complaining isn't a strategy. The world has changed for vocational rehabilitation. It has moved from a tailwind to a headwind, as it now is asked to report on very new measures and standards that it has not had to for many, many years. But this is an opportunity for VR and for inclusive higher education programs to lean into that headwind, figure out ways that they can meet these standards because the standards result in meaningful adjustments and improvements and outcomes for students with intellectual disabilities in developing employment and interdependent lives going forward. So hopefully that, that quote means something to you the way it does to me for this particular topic. Next slide, please. As we come to the close of our time together, I wanted to highlight just a couple of things that you may be interested in if you're not familiar with them already. Through Think College, we have both an affinity, excuse me, a VR affinity group that serves as an online community for reviewing and discussing issues, strategies, and results related to this partnership between vocational rehabilitation and inclusive higher education. Um, there is a link that you can go to there that uh, you can register at to become part of that affinity group. That group meets by phone um, quarterly. We had a call the first part of February of this year, 2018. So our next call will be the first um, week in May of 2018. And you will get information um, when you go to that participant site. The other thing that you may be interested in if you're not already connected is that we have a Think College Slack channel. So if you're familiar with Slack, um, you can go on and there is an, an ongoing online um, dialogue addressing issues about the partnership between vocational rehabilitation and inclusive higher education as well. So. Um, go to thinkcollege.slack.com to get connected to that. In either case, the affinity group or for the Slack, if you need more information, you can contact me directly at my email that is listed there at the bottom of that particular slide. So please consider joining those as they, these are topics that we've talked about today that do come up from time to time in both of those forums. Next slide, please. We've reached the point in our presentation now where it's time to thank you for your attention. We hope that uh, this information has been helpful to you. Um, if you want to learn more or you need advice, we can help you. Go to thinkcollege.net or you can contact thinkcollegeta at gmail.com to get um, direct technical assistance on questions that you might have. So please take advantage of the resources that you have um, presented through this. And of course, as you see, both um, Dr. Saluski's and my emails listed there, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have questions about our presentation or if there is information that you would like to have that maybe we did not cover. Having said that, thank you for your attention. We appreciate the time. And um, on behalf of Dr. Saluski and myself, we will sign off at this point in time and thank you again. Thank you for listening to this Rehabilitation Research and Training Center on Vocational Rehabilitation Practices and Youth Online Seminar. Please follow the provided link to take the quiz. As a reminder, if you score 70% or more above, you will be emailed a certificate of completion. If you score below 70%, you'll have one more additional opportunity to re-watch the seminar and complete the quiz. Thank you.